Ladies and gents, we need to talk because things aren't looking too great for Bitcoin. We're currently sitting at $61,000, but the real reason behind this dump is very important and I don't think anybody's really talking about it. I've been trying to warn my community for the past couple of days. Um, and we even mentioned when Bitcoin was at the all time high at 73.7K, uh, Bitcoin was forming a bearish divergence. Uh, we were very close to hitting the universe head and shoulders target. So I mentioned it may be a good time to be getting out of long positions. Volume was decreasing, open interest was decreasing, and that combination uh, very commonly indicates a reversal in the market. But of course, you know, when you post a bearish video when everything is bullish, you become Michael Burry and people give you a lot of hate. But unfortunately, the market did end up reversing um, and now we're sitting at 61K. So in this video, I'm going to be talking about why this is happening, why we should still be very much concerned and why things can go more south. Uh, but if they do go more south, it's going to be probably one of the last opportunities that me and you have to be able to buy cheap Bitcoin. So I would highly recommend to watch this video until the end, smash up the like button if you think it's useful, uh, that would mean the world to me, and subscribe if you're new to the channel. But with that said, let's jump straight into the technical analysis very briefly, and then I'm going to link it to the real reason why Bitcoin is dumping. Um, so what we saw here was the first time Bitcoin had a sell-off based off of futures data. If we go back in time, ever since the creation of the spot ETF, so if we do a small recap here, the price of Bitcoin uh, hit a local top of $49,000 after the launch of the spot ETFs. Then we had a huge sell-off, even though ETF inflows were positive, because generally with new ETFs, you have positive inflows. You don't tend to have negative outflows, net outflows when you have a new ETF launch. This was a buy the rumor, sell the news type situation. The market was pretty much priced in with everything that happened uh, and the market fell by approximately 15%. And then eventually we hit a low, uh, a sustained low of 19% in a price drop, which if we go to a parabola in context of a parabola, pretty normal, right? And when Bitcoin broke out from $38,000, that was the breakout zone of the third base in the, uh, the parabola. So. At this point, it's normal to see the price of an asset actually even double, right? So after we broke out of 38K, the price of Bitcoin went on a huge rally to hit an all-time high of $73,700. But within that time period, after we broke $38,000, um, there was not any sustained drop. So a drop that lasted for a long amount of time. The only one that we can see happened at the start of March. This was a 15% drop or a 14% drop that was more like a flash crash. So it only lasted between Tuesday uh, to literally Wednesday. It only lasted for 24 hours. After 24 hours, the price of Bitcoin continued to remain in this uptrend. And most of this pumping was due to the bullish, the bullish news and the bullish positive uh, inflows into the spot ETFs. We can see here that out of most of the days, We've seen, yes, yeah, some negative inflows coming in following the crash um, crash after the e initial ETF launch. We saw 52 million out, 126 million out, uh, so on and so forth. But between that period up till now, we've not been seeing much negativity in terms of ETFs. Um, we had the Genesis liquidation, the Gemini liquidation, um, and it didn't affect the ETFs overall that much. Uh, and the market sentiment has been pretty bullish because of that. And it was almost that where we're stuck in a loop where uh, the more that the ETFs accumulated, the more the price of Bitcoin pumped because everybody was speculating. All right, so the ETF issuers are accumulating more. That means the price of the asset is going to continue going towards the upside. And that's what we've been seeing over the past couple of weeks. Nobody really thought of the possibility that, that, that this inflow curve into the ETFs would flip bearish. And a couple of videos ago, I mentioned how dangerous it would be if the ETFs would actually reverse into outflows. But nobody knew why that could happen. Um, and the reason why it did end up happening was because the ETFs topped out in terms of futures data. Uh, low decreasing volume, high open interest, bearish divergence, reversal. Uh, and the issue was this reversal sustained for a long amount of time. As I said, usually whenever Bitcoin crashes, uh, by however much percent it does so, uh, the price of Bitcoin tended to reverse strongly back towards the upside. Uh, but this time, that was not the situation and the price of Bitcoin continued dropping. 
Now, uh, after Monday's data, which was something I was looking forward to seeing, Monday's data reflected what happened on the ETFs. So if we switch back to the data, what we saw on Monday market close, meaning that would be, so 19th March was Tuesday, so 18th of March. This data here reflected what happened on Thursday and Friday. The price of Bitcoin topped out on Thursday last week at 73.7K, and going into Friday, we start to see the reversal. Now, how the ETFs work is they report their net buying and selling within a specific day, one or two days after the initial transaction. So the data is publicized here after one or two days of actually performing the buying and selling activity. Within, let's say the price of Bitcoin is pumping, and um, I was BlackRock and I'm offering IBIT, the IBIT shares to my investors. If the price of Bitcoin is pumping, then we can tell that most likely a majority of the investors are buying up IBIT. So because they're buying up IBIT, what I do is I need to create more shares. And to create more shares, I need to buy up more Bitcoin from the market so that I can retain a net asset value of, uh, of basically it has to be it has to be as close to it as possible, right? Um, so the more that people buy, the more Bitcoin I buy from the spot market to sustain my vault and keep a good ratio. Uh, however, right, because for the first time Bitcoin reversed based off of futures data. Um, ever since, arguably, we could even say since the launch of the ETFs, when we had very high funding high funding rates, um, the market began to sell off naturally based off of technical analysis rather than the fundamental analysis of the ETF inflows. Uh, and this forced, well, people to start selling these institutional ETFs. People started to sell IBIT. People started to sell FBTC. And therefore, they had to reduce their Bitcoin holdings to keep that net asset value ratio sustained. And what we saw was after the selling, uh, so the selling started on Thursday to Friday, uh, on Monday's data, we, we had the first reflection of the selling because they report, as I said, uh, one or two days after the actual transactions. So on the 18th of March, the Bitcoin ETF saw $154 million in net outflows with Grayscale having the most outflows ever since the inception of the rest of the spot ETFs at 642.5 million dollars. However, I was happy that IBIT still remained pretty bullish with $451 million worth in inflows. But what we can see today is incredibly concerning because IBIT only took in a record low of $75.2 million, whereas Grayscale outputted $443 million, which is $326 million worth in net outflows. This is incredibly concerning. Remember, Grayscale, investors in Grayscale want to exit anyway, so they already have a reason to be selling GPTC, whereas IBIT investors have a less of a reasoning to be selling. So as the price continues to dump, well then GPTC will continue to offload regardless. Yes, IBIT may still be buying or they may not be buying, but Grayscale will offload regardless. The aim of the game here, whenever the price drops, the ETFs, the rest of the ETFs should be accumulating enough to compensate the losses generated by Grayscale. But clearly for the first time, we're seeing that IBIT was not able to do that, coming in with $75.2 million worth of inflows so far. This could change, but I don't think there's going to be a dramatic change in the upcoming hours. Uh, and that is incredibly bearish for the market. This is exactly what I was very much scared of. So tomorrow, tomorrow, if the price of Bitcoin continues to drop, where this drop is also enough, right? Tomorrow or Friday's data could reflect a net outflow on IBIT. And this is going to scare so many investors. So I'm warning you now, it's likely, like I warned you guys last week, it is likely that we're going to be seeing net outflows on IBIT in the next couple of days, and that's going to scare the market a lot. And that will likely extend the current bearish trend that we're seeing on the market. So be careful. Um, that will be the first time that we see net outflows from the likes of, uh, of IBIT, and that is a little bit scary. But don't lose the macro picture. Not losing the macro picture is super important. We were in the loop of the price increasing because the net inflows were increasing. If we now shift into a cycle where uh, the price continues to drop because the outflows are dropping, I think it would be harsher because price tends to drop faster than it actually ends up going up because there's less um, variables required for the price to drop, right? Um, and that would be scary. 
So let me get to where I think the price of Bitcoin could fall to um, in terms of my TA. We saw a bearish uh, head and shoulders pattern forming on the four hourly time frame for the past couple of um, for the past couple of days. If I just visualize it to you like this, so left shoulder, then you have the head, then you had the right shoulder. And after we broke below $65,000, you could say that that's the time to probably be entering into a short position. Now, the target that this head and shoulders pattern has, which I've not entered, by the way, because I'm not looking to enter shorts at this point in the market. I'm only uh, looking to accumulate more Bitcoin um, as the price continues to drop downwards. Um, if we measure the height of this um, head and shoulders pattern, uh, that should give us a target of 63, uh, sorry, 53 uh, or 56 actually thousand dollars. So if we put it right there uh, and if we align it like so, uh, we, we should be able to see that the price of Bitcoin is a target of approximately $56,000. And what I can do here is I can adjust this box so that the lower bound of this box or the support uh, support range is aligned with 55.6K. Uh, and to edit that, I don't know how that's going to work, but... Um, what we do know is we can draw a line here at 56, uh, 55.6K because we know that there's going to be the target of that head and shoulders pattern, which was forming over the past couple of days. So that's where I'm looking at. I think uh, between 55.6 and $59,000 more so uh, is going to be a very good final buy-in zone for Bitcoin. Uh, it's going to be dependent on how the ETFs react. Uh, at $59,000, we have support from the seven period moving average. And on top of support from the seven period moving average, we also have support from the 2021 initial bull run that we saw. Uh, we saw the candles topping out at the $59,000 level. We also saw that in the second phase of the bull market, um, a lot of candles found support at the $59,000 area before we entered into a huge reversal. And these factors are giving me that 59K probably is a good buying zone. But what would, be, what would be even more concerning is if this three period moving average crosses into to the seven period moving average. We can go back in history and we can see that, look, whenever the three and seven period moving averages cross into each other, the price of Bitcoin tends to continue declining and it indicates tops in the market. Look, three and seven period moving uh, average crossover, another crossover there. Uh, we had a brief one, but quickly Bitcoin reversed back positive and the price of Bitcoin shot up. So this tends to be pretty accurate in terms of the date of which the market reverses completely. Uh, and yes, maybe it doesn't time the top exactly, but uh, it does give you a delayed, a slightly delayed indication on when the market could begin reversing. That's why 59K, I have buy orders. I'm going to be buying Bitcoin at 59K. Is it possible that we drop further? Look, this candle on the weekly time frame incredibly concerning, right? As soon as the candle, uh, the following candle started trading below this lower wick, I was like, okay, now market's gonna reverse and now probably we're gonna hit the seven period moving average. Uh, so that is concerning, right? But if we go into the monthly time frame and we want to conduct even bigger macro analysis, we have a huge shooting star candle that is reflected on the monthly time frame. That is not a good sign at all. And remember what I said, uh, Bitcoin, if we break above, the prior all-time high candle close and we stay above it and we close above it, then that's great because Bitcoin never tends to make it back to the prior all-time high candle close. We don't do it. We do not make it back. But in this scenario, I mentioned that there was still time until this monthly candle closes and that Bitcoin usually tends to reverse coming up towards the halving event. Um, and if the candle closes below it, then that's going to give me an indication that maybe on the monthly time frame, we could even drop to lower prices. So that is scary. We have three depths of technical analysis here. We have one short term, we have one midterm that we can say is the weekly time frame, and we have one long term chart, which is the monthly time frame, and all of them are currently currently pointing bearish, which is a problem here. Uh, but I think that all cycles have been broken here. Uh, Bitcoin is not reacting like what we saw before. The price of Bitcoin coming up towards the halving, yes, we see these on average 20% corrections, but we got to remember the sustained bullish momentum is a lot lower going into the halvings in the previous cycles compared to what we've been seeing now. So we've went up a lot higher compared to the previous halving cycles, therefore giving us an indication that the price of Bitcoin could therefore reverse harder than previous cycles. So do keep in mind. But really $47,000 would be 
the bomb to hit like that is the place you want bitcoin to be trading at to to just go all in and to sell everything that you have of course not financial advice i am joking but um at 47k i'm probably gonna be holding posters up and saying that look this is the final final time to buy this is your last chance i mentioned in the previous video look bitcoin at an all-time high the same product as, as it is in a bear market things don't change the only thing that does change is market sentiment, market euphoria, or fear in the market. And I think we're entering into a very fearful zone. Uh, but as I said, I'm going to be DCing in as much as possible. I've, I'm still in a long position that I entered at 43K that I'm not planning on closing. Uh, maybe on my personal account, I should have taken some profits. But uh, at this point, I don't think there's... Um, uh, much of a reason to do so if we fall back down to that price i'll just double down on the position because it will be a winning position final thing to mention before i end off this video is that today we have the fomc event i will probably try and live stream it it's going to be at 10 p.m uh, and it's going to be important will it reflect um, a change in bitcoin yes why because we are very much correlated to the stock market. Now we're breaking off this correlation by falling so hard, but I think it will have some impact on the price. Um, I'll discuss it in further detail if I decide to live stream it tonight. But stay tuned for that. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, again, smash up the like button, uh, subscribe and turn on the notification bell. And remember, watch every single video because if I do make a warning that the price of Bitcoin is likely going to reverse towards the downside, um, like we like we discussed um, just a couple of days back, uh, as a matter of fact, on um, on Thursday when the price was topping out here, you do not want to miss out, right? So stay tuned, watch every video, and I will see you all in the next one very shortly. Take care, guys. Have a great day and bye-bye.